Hello friends, welcome to your own lead channel Scala Express. Today we will learn how to define data collection in Scala like array, list and tuple. In previous video we have seen how to use Scala loops and in this video we will focus on data collection classes of Scala. Moving on to data collection classes, array is the first class will strike in any developer's mind when it comes to Scala data collection discussion. So just like in other languages, Scala also gives us the way to define array with array keyword. This is how we define array in Scala with val, greetings, new array, and then type of array, and then its size. To define elements inside these array string type, this is how we define value. At index 0, we have stored welcome. At index 1, 2. At index 2, we have stored Scala. At an index 3, we have stored Express. Moving on, for loop, we have seen and we understand well now because I have discussed this in my previous video. This is just for reiteration. Let's move on. In order to update the value, you have update function so you need to give index of the element and then you need to give the new value at this index so if you see previously we have stored welcome to scala express now after this if i run this for loop it will become on bondage to scala express so here it's a clear differences previously welcome to scala express and now Onboarded to Scala Express. Moving on, for simplicity's sake, you can keep update function just like greetings at zero index. You can store welcome. And for for explicit definition of for loop, you can have this dot to method. It is simply to give you the range from zero to three, where three is inclusive. So now your value will get changed again to welcome because welcome we have updated here at zeroth index. Now going on, we are applying the same for loop but with one new method called dot apply. Now from where this dot apply method is coming? This dot apply method is coming from companion object type array. This companion object we will discuss in my later moment. Moving on, this dot apply method is having one beautiful feature that it can take n number of elements inside and it do not need to define any size. Previously, we were defining as explicitly if you if you see our above example. Now it is just like array dot apply. This is the exact way how we call a static function in Java. We don't need new keywords here. Once you define welcome to Scala Express in this, here is the message from interpreter. Your array of a string has been created and this array contains welcome to Scala Express the same value. Now, this is the way we retrate and our final value coming from this greet is welcome to Scala. And in fact, if you look our previous video, we have discussed for each. So in more simpler way or concise way, we can do greet.foreach.print. So that means just three words will retreat entire this array and will get us the value. So far, we have seen how array works and its mutable nature. Now what if we require something immutable? For that purpose, Scala gives us list. So list is something immutable in nature and it allows us to store all the elements just like any another data collection class and Scala gives list with keyword called list. So in order to define list, we need to first create the variable, then we need to write list and inside these braces, we need to write the value which we like to store. So I'm creating two lists here, numbers one to three and numbers four and five. There is a reason why I'm creating this two list now because list gives us the beautiful function called three columns. Three column function we have got in Scala 
which actually help us to do the concatenation between two lists. So if you see here, this is the exact way you can do concatenation between two lists. And the outcome, if you see, numbers will have five elements now, where previously it was just having three and four. And the sequence will remain same. Allah has immutability in its core nature. So every time you do any update, any append, any deletion, or any concatenation with a list, a new instance will form. It has rich library of functions, which you can explore on Scala libraries. I'm giving you some examples here, like rivers, exist, filter, and many more they are having. So far, we have discussed the immutable collection and the mutable collection, but they both are having one common thing, which is their type. What if we would like to store something is immutable in nature, but at the same time, we wanted to store different, different types of element in it. That means the heterogeneous nature we are looking. So Scala gives us tuple for this kind of business use case. And this is how we define the tuple. First, we need to define val, then chunk tuples, and then braces. In braces, you can write n number of values, different different types. In order to retrieve values out of these tuples, you need to write dot underscore one. In order to retrieve second value, underscore two, for third, underscore three. If you notice so far, in arrays, we started our index with zero. And in triples, we, we are starting our index with underscore one. So there must be some question coming in your mind. Why not zero here? That question, I let you explore and comment in my video if you do not get this question's answer. Why triples do not start with dot underscore zero? It's okay if you're not able to get any answers also i will give you the answer but just try yourself doing this exercise what will happen when you try to retrieve values out of this junk tuples with dot underscore zero i think we have covered everything in theory it's the time to do some practice let me start scala ripple now Since we have worked on array first, so we will define array. Here I have written the val greetings, the exact same array statements which we have seen in our content previously. Now when I enter, the Scala interpreter creates array for us called greetings and it has four values but null. Now it's time to assign values in these nulls. To assign values in these nulls, Greetings at zero index, we need to write welcome to Scala Express and then enter. Now we have defined this array and we have defined the value inside this array. Now it's time to retrade all the values and print our console. To print on console, we have our old dearest friend called for loop. Welcome to Scala Express. Is our output and we can see on screen now. Now in order to update the defined value inside the array, we need to write the update command. So now we will change welcome to onboarded here. Our output from the for loop has been changed. Previously it was welcome to Scala Express and now it is onboarded to Scala Express. Now to take a look how that dot to function works, I'm writing for loop again with dot to function now. So if you see here, we have written this for with dot to function now. It's worked completely fine. Onboarded to Scala Express. Now with this dot to function, we will write in fact the dot apply function. So here we are writing apply with the print statement. It works completely fine. Now since I told you this apply function comes from the companion object and as we know from our first video that object do not need any new keyword, let's check 
if it works. So I'm writing here the greet variable, which will actually have array. It has no new, and then it has dot apply function and welcome to Scala Express. Okay, it get created. Wow. Now we will see if it is stored the same value which we have given inside. Yes, it is welcome to Scala Express only. So that means I was right. We can do like this. <laughs> and now we will talk about our old dearest friend, which was our for each function. And it will take care of your output. And here is your output. Welcome to Scala Express. So now we have learned how to define array, list, and tuples, and where to use array, list, and tuples. I hope you like the video. Please subscribe to this channel. And if you like the content and effort, do not hesitate to like the video. Thank you. Have a good day.